Righto guys, welcome back. As you saw in the last episode, Mads and I finally got rid of our soft shell rooftop tent and we've thrown on this hard shell rooftop tent. We are so excited to run you guys through a full review of that. But for a number of reasons, for the past three years, Maddie and I have had a lot of experience touring around Australia in rooftop tents and with the amount of changes on the market to the designs of the rooftop tents, soft shells, hard shells and mixtures, we we're well overdue for a change. So the past three weeks, we've been traveling in this hard shell rooftop tent in the cold, in the heat, and forever changing rainy conditions up here in the Victorian high country. So we're gonna give you a full honest review today, guide and walk through on the good and the bad of the rooftop tent. Plus throughout this episode, I'm gonna throw a couple side-by-side -side comparisons of our soft shell and hard shell specs in different little details, and a few ways that you can keep your rooftop tent lasting longer after you purchase it. In this video, we're gonna cover everything specifically from the weight and the size, the quality of the design, as we've heard there is water and condensation problems with these hard shell rooftop tents. And what bedding can fit in the internal dimensions and storage. Then we'll move on to the 12 volt system, the pack up and pack down time, mounting, and then the actual price range of these hard shell rooftop tents throughout the entire market. Now, first things first, before we quickly crack into everything, we've got to talk about seasoning the canvas to your rooftop tent. Just like you do with any canvas, whether it's rooftop tents, swags, tents, or whatever. Now, if you don't know what seasoning your canvas is, don't stress, I'll quickly run through it right now. As you can see here, as soon as we got home, Maddie and I completely opened up the rooftop tent to completely expose all of the canvas. What you want to do is use every pole and guy rope that there is, because if you don't do this and it's uneven or slouching in one area, it'll cause the canvas to expand and contract, causing it to permanently favour that position. What you want to do, once you've got it all out, you want to get the hose and you want to wet every single piece of canvas or fly screen that you can see. The reason why that this happens is because when the water gets into the canvas, into the little gaps in the fraz fabric, it causes it to swell around the stitch holes to make the canvas more water resistant. You want to do this for about two to three minutes and you want to make sure that you're doing it on a hot sunny day. So when the water goes in, it quickly expands and sort of sets in that position. But that's enough of that, let's crack into it. <music> One of the main reasons why we swapped over to the hard shell rooftop tent was in regards to the setup and the pack up time. That's right, it's absolutely ridiculous how quickly these things unpack and pack. So we'll show you the quick setup that we're gonna do on it and then the full setup and show you how minimal difference there is between a full and a quick setup on it. So let's get setting up. Now just a hot tip I'll add in here, obviously you have to rely on your car to be level for the rooftop tent to be level for when you sleep. What we do is we bring the chucks with us to put underneath the wheels to help solve this, but we have also seen people use their max tracks, which is not a bad idea either. Starting off with the quick setup in real time, we simply start off with both getting out of the car, undoing the two latches at the back, raising it up with the help of the gas straps, which do a great job, then pull around the elastic strap, which is used to help pull in the canvas and fly when unpacking. So what are the really good things about this ladder that comes with this? It has a really, really unique design. It literally, when you get it out, it just pops all the way up, like that. And then if you want it to all come down at once, it has these little pole, sorry, not little pole things here, these little levers, and you just press one button, and it goes down like that, it's fantastic. Now the final simple thing you have to do is put the ladder on the hooks, and that's it. So as I just said before, the ladders have a fantastic design, but one of the really bad things is, is you can't actually fit the ladder inside the rooftop tent and there's no specific amount on top of the rooftop tent. So you need to be able to collapse this and store it somewhere in your vehicle or create your own mount, which is probably what I'm gonna do in the next three to four months is try and design something. And I'll share that with you guys in another episode when I get around to it. Moving on to the full setup, it's just a couple of easy additional extras of putting the poles into the tent and attach it through the eyelet holes of the fly. And then rolling up the canvas on the front to allow for the views and the extra airflow. <laughs> Love a thumbs up after doing something. 
Righto, so as you just saw, it is absolutely phenomenal how quickly these things unpack, particularly between the quick unpack time and the full unpack time compared to our soft shell rooftop tent and the other ones on the market. Now, as I haven't revealed as to exactly what type this hard shell is, what we have is the Darche, as you can see in all the branding name all over it, but the brand model that we have is the Streamliner 1250. So now that you're finished with Samuel, come in and check out the interior. Righto, so we'll have a quick pause point there because we wanted to quickly talk about how we chose this specific rooftop tent. So as you all know, we have a roof load rating on the cabin of 69 kilos when going off-road. So that ruled out anything over that 75 to 100 kilo range of all those other rooftop tents that have a significant amount of room and are a lot wider. So other ones we looked at were the Alucab LT50 and some off-brand ones as well, but we found there just wasn't enough room for both of us to be sleeping in yeah, it. Yeah, quite small. That's right. So because of that issue, we finally got around to this Darche Streamliner 1250 that we just had a look at, and it is absolutely perfect. But it does come with its pros and cons. Now, one of the biggest cons of the rooftop tent is we can only fit in our doona um, because it only lets you have that small amount of room for all your bedding. But one of the really good things is, is that it packs down quite slim. So we just wanted to throw in there, if you are going out and looking at a rooftop tent and you wanted to go on the lighter side of things, we definitely recommend this one over those other ones because there just is not enough room for two people to sleep in there, as well as the bedding factor and a couple other factors we'll get into later in the video. Interior it is the most optimal part of when you're camping. You want pure comfort. Now this rooftop tent has excelled in the interior and we're quite impressed with it. So let me show you. A winner for Samuel and I for choosing this rooftop tent was these inbuilt USB lights where you can change the brightness from orange to white. The orange is perfect for keeping any bugs out of your rooftop tent and white is perfect for if you want to read a book or just chill out. All right, so I just wanted to quickly talk about the 12 volt system in here without looking too sexy in the back here. So obviously, Maddie just explained that it comes with two LED strips that have a USB and plug-in. So Darche give you the USB plug, which is actually really handy because you can just plug it into sort of any portable power that you've got, rather than having to completely mount it into your system. And then it gives you these two unique mounting systems that go into the lights themselves. I'll quickly show you. So obviously, you've got one here on this side, and then you've got one there over on that side, and they both hang towards the back. And there's also a little pocket at the back there if you want to completely mount it to your 12 volt system. All right, so all you do is grab one end, plug it in like so. I'd give you a zoom in, but this is pretty self-explanatory. And then that plugs in like so. Click. And then all you have to do is plug it into your USB outlet and turn that bad boy on. I don't know if you can see them turn on, but they literally just flick color and then turn on between white, amber, and then obviously nothing, and then you can dim them as well for the reasons Maddie explained. The tent also comes with two little side pockets and roof pockets on the top. There are five different roof pockets, but one is an awesome one as it's clear screen to be able to slot in your iPad or laptop to watch some movies before you go to bed. So there's also two outside storage bags. Now these ones are perfect from your usual ones as you can store your shoes here, but it also has separate and thinner pockets to store anything else so you don't get your shoes and your drink bottle all mixed up. So let's start with the base of the rooftop tent. Now, the base we've got a 10 millimeter anti-condensation mat. Now we know condensation is a massive issue in rooftop tents because it causes the growth of mold. But with this anti-condensation mat, definitely reduces any mold growth Therefore, hopefully your tent remains nice and clean. Now in our rooftop tent, we've also got a 50 millimeter um, memory foam mattress. Now from our personal experience, it's just not as comfortable. So we went out to BCF and got a custom made 50 millimeter, ah, 50 millimeter mattress so that it would still slot in. But if you want something a bit more affordable, there's always other options like inflatable mattresses or stuff online. So definitely look into that, but we're gonna let you know how the BCF one goes, but I'm quite excited. Due to it being a lightweight streamlined rooftop tent, we have found we had to make some sacrifices. We can no longer fit our pillows in the rooftop tent. We still, however, can fit some dunas and um, the mattress in there, 
but otherwise I won't close up if we've got our pillows, which doesn't actually make any difference to me as I sleep with my pillow in the car anyway. During summer and winter, inside your rooftop tent can get quite hot or quite cold. So it is fantastic that this tent comes with great ventilation as it has three different windows, which you can also mount your um, ladder to different points as well if you just decide to change your mind on where your ladder is posted. Now the fantastic thing as well is that you can zip up the uh, canvas to create warmth or unzip it all to let the cool air kind of come through. With this rooftop tent, there is also removable fly. Now all you have to do is unzip that one to remove it, which you know was a common issue for us that we couldn't remove the other one. So during all the wind and the noise, it kept us up at night, but it's fantastic that we can just unzip this one and remove the fly and therefore have a good night's rest. Good. But if I did have to say some cons, it would be with this fly screen. Now most fly screens we have found are pretty fine, which is perfect for midget proof or keeping any mosquitoes out. But we just don't know as this one's just not as thin as previous ones we have seen. So we'll keep you updated if it does keep all the midges out. Now another thing that might affect you is if you're a bit claustrophobic, this tent does have that clamshell zone. So even though it's nice and tall up here, we might find on the other end it's a bit shallow so i would recommend always putting your feet here but otherwise you might feel a bit claustrophobic so it might not just be for you so obviously maddie and i were just speaking about the ceiling problems that there is in these hard shell rooftop tents and one of the biggest things that we noticed with this particular model is that it has really really good thick seals and even with that light amount of bedding in there it does not affect those seals and we haven't had any water ingress at all However, if you are wanting to put in your pillows or a thicker doona or something like that, I would imagine that the shell itself would not seal. Getting into the specifications, the internal dimensions of the rooftop tent is 2 metres in length, 1.2 in width and 1.4 in millimetres in height when it is all up and ready. <laughs> Radio. So let's quickly crack into the weight, the dimensions, and how this is mounted onto the vehicle. First things first, it is 69 kilos without the ladder. As we spoke about before, the ladder is not mounted on the roof itself. However, it does come with a roof rack system. So we've been able to put the roof rack system, obviously, onto the roof of the rooftop tent, and we have mounted our 250 watt solar panel on the top. Now, it does look a little bit ridiculous at the moment because of how high it sits on the roof when it's flat. So we are going to get that mounted a little bit lower because they're having a bit of wind noise as well as it looks a little bit silly. Now one of the bonuses of that is that we can have more room on the back as well. I don't know if you can see up top there, but there's also another probably half meter of room that will end up mounting the ladder on there once I sort of figure out how to get the ladder mounted onto the roof without causing too much more weight on it. Now the next thing that we're going to talk about is mounting. So obviously one of the biggest things that we talked about in the last video with the soft shell rooftop tent was that improper mounting system with those quick release tabs where we were having problems with it coming loose and making a lot of noise. So I've rectified that. So let's have a quick look. So the first thing we did was we got rid of those quick release tabs because obviously we had problems with those and we got these low profile Rhino rack fully mounted into the vehicle itself, obviously screwed into the cabin. It is so quiet, there is absolutely no movement and we are so happy with it. We've just obviously just done three weeks in the Vic High Country, have not had a drama and it also makes it look a lot better. You see a lot of hard shell rooftop tents where they sit quite high on the cabin or the back. Not only do they look a little bit ridiculous, but it creates a lot of wind noise in that factor as well. Rightio, so I'll quickly jump in there and show you guys how it's mounted on the front of this dual cab full wheel drive because often they're mounted on the tub because these are a lot lengthier and they often don't fit on the cabin of the vehicle. So what I've done is I've actually had it off center and I've got it sitting 400 mils forward of this rail here and I've got it sitting about 700 to 750 millimeters at the back. Now obviously that is not centered and one of the, the thoughts that I had before putting on there it wouldn't be rigid enough on the back to be able to handle our weight but because of the two rails that sort of sit lengthways from the very front that's inbuilt into the hard shell rooftop tent itself, it is actually rigid enough and strong enough to be able to be off center. So just a little hot tip there, if you're wanting to put it on the front and the cabin of your vehicle, the Streamliner 1250 obviously can. So obviously this hard shell rooftop tent is 69 kilos, so it's definitely on the lighter range and we told you why we went that. But if you're looking to go up into more the comfortability area, you're getting those wider arcs, so it's a lot more roomy and spacious on the inside, you're looking between 75 and 100 kilos. Now, personally, we wanted to also steer away from that sort of 
weight range because sometimes when we go forward driving up in the Vic High Country or anywhere around Australia where you may be lifting wheels or you may be very top heavy, you do increase rolling your car. But if you're just the average Joe like us, doing a lot of touring around Australia, you don't need to worry about it too much, but I tell you what, you do feel that extra 25 kilos, let alone the extra 69 kilos that you have on top of your vehicle. <music> Rightio, let's talk about pricing of these hard shell rooftop tents because I tell you what, they will empty your bloody pocket. They cost between $3,000 and $5,000 for your average hard shell rooftop tent. This one costs us $4,499 and that's not fitted. It costs about $5,100 to get it fitted with our 12 volt system connected up to it. That's almost double the price range of your soft shell rooftop tent. So when you're in the market for a rooftop tent, you really need to make sure how often you're going to be using it to be able to pay how much you want for it. So let's talk about fuel consumption and wind resistance. The perfect thing about this rooftop tent is it packs up to only be 15 centimetres, which is perfect for aerodynamics, that there's minimal wind sounds when we're driving and we don't feel much resistance at all. Yeah, and on top of that, we're only using half a litre more than we usually would without the rooftop tent compared to the massive two and a half litres that we had on the old soft shell rooftop tent because that packed up to 40 centimetres in height. So that is the really good thing about this slim, slim line design. But as well with the other hard shell rooftop tents, I've also heard really good things about them packing up minimally as well. So let's go pack up this rooftop tent, which I used to dread doing, but now this one's so quick and easy, I do not mind at all. So stay around for a final summary of pros and cons of hard shell rooftop tents to see if you should be in the market to get one. Rightio, so closing up the rooftop tent, we've worked out this process takes us around one to two minutes from the full unpack. Simply unhooking the two poles that can then be left inside, taking off the outside pockets, and then zipping up the fly screen and pulling the elastic around. The elastic should be positioned halfway up the tent to help pull in the canvas and fly when folding down properly. Finally taking off the ladder, dropping it down as you can see I love doing this, and then pulling the tent down and locking it up via the hinges. How much easier is that? Oh my God, so much easier. That is actually a life changing thing, hey, I cannot believe it. But let's crack into the pros and cons as a final summary. Some of the pros are how strong the aluminium structure is, how strong the hinges are, and how slimline it all packs up and how sleek the interior is. Yes, and like there are so many positives on this rooftop tennis, but unfortunately, as always, there are some cons. So the ladder, it doesn't have a spot in the rooftop tent, on top of the rooftop tent, so you need to put it in the car. Now, the locations, even though there's three locations you can put the ladder on, it does get in the way of both doors and opening up the back of the vehicle itself. And then the final one is obviously bedding. You can get your doona in there, but you can't get a thick doona. You can't upgrade the bedding and you can't get your pillows in there. But that's fine because we can just keep a normal doona in there. We usually have our pillows in the back anyways because Maddie sleeps with them. But overall, hard shell rooftop tents for us are an absolute game changer, particularly when we are moving from site to site all the time. So we'll leave you to it. We'll make sure we keep you tuned with any issues or any other things that we find throughout the rest of the series that we make of going away around Australia. Plus, a little hint as well, we are booking to go away to WA next year for four months. So if you're still watching, stay tuned.